Oxford from the inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. Hello and welcome back to Oxford from the inside. I am your host, Janaid. I am studying medicine at Trinity College and I've just finished my second year. And I'm here today with my lovely guests, Claire and Dan. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Claire and I've just finished my second year studying medicine at Pembroke. I'm Daniel and I just finished my second year as well and I'm studying medicine at Wadham. Brilliant. So uh, as you've just heard, Claire and Dan are both um, in the same year as myself and we all study medicine and we are friends. So uh, we've you know, been through the trials and tribulations of uh, two years of an Oxford medicine degree. So hopefully that will translate wow. into our on-air chemistry for this episode today. <laughs> that's, the, that's the introduction I'm going with. Uh, but today we're not actually talking about um, the medicine course particularly, but rather we're talking about the admissions process. Specifically, we'll be talking today about how to write a successful medicine personal statement. A big, a big question uh, I'm sure everyone will be asking at home, so we'll give you all the, the top tips today. But first, I'm just going to uh, explain briefly what a personal statement is in the first place, uh, and then we'll get into the episode. So in the UK, uh, when you apply to university, most people do so through the University and Colleges Admissions Service, or UCAS. And when you make a UCAS application, part of it is writing a personal statement, which is basically a short essay about yourself and basically just saying who you are, why you want to study the subject you're applying for and why the university should pick you. Um, it's only like 600, 700 words, roughly. So it's not really a long thing, but it does make up part of the whole application process. Uh, I will also add that the same personal statement goes to all the universities that you apply to. So there's no such thing really as a personal statement specifically for one university. So having said that, today's episode isn't specific to Oxford. If you're a medicine student who's not really sure about Oxford or applying to a different university, it will still be useful stuff. So make sure you make sure you listen. Uh, yes, so in today's episode um, with Claire and Dan, who obviously have written successful per uh, medicine personal statements, we're going to be talking about what you put in a medicine personal statement in the first place, what makes it successful, and if there's anything specific about medicine particularly, rather than biomedical sciences or some sort of uh, another straight science degree. We're going to be giving you some recommendations as to how you can sort of expand your knowledge in medicine with like reading or other sort of media and generally just giving you top tips for anyone who's starting to write or thinking of writing a medicine personal statement. All that to come and more. So uh, firstly, uh, I think I have talked enough, <laughs> Claire and Dan, would you guys like to talk, um, if you can cast your mind back to way back when he wrote the personal statement in the first place. A long time ago. <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. Um, could you talk a little bit about how you found it generally? Was it a difficult thing to do? Did it take a long time? Um, I'd say it was not as bad, like difficult as I thought it would be. I thought I'd find it a lot harder than I did. Like once I got going, I kind of got there more easily mm -hmm. than I thought, but it, it definitely took a while. Um, like once you've kind of got a first draft you end up just drafting and redrafting and redrafting until you're kind of happy with it and that's what takes like the big chunk of time I'd say like the kind of easier bit in the way to get started is more I, I started by just like making a list of things that I would like that I've done that I'd want to include and kind of just words that I'd associate with it so whether it was like skills that I'd acquired um by doing those things or things I'd learnt um, about medicine as a profession from doing certain things, for example, and just sort of building from there, like grouping them together to make paragraphs that kind of made sense. Yeah, I think I'd agree with Claire. It was, I think the hardest bit was definitely starting. Yeah. After that, it, it's kind of a simple, it, not simple, but it's a, it's a lot easier than you think it will be. I agree with Claire, though, making a list of the things you've done or things you kind of want to include um, especially if you've like, if you've done a lot of things, try and make it somewhat hierarch hierarchical. Is that a word? Yes. Um, <laughs> because you will you, you will not have room for everything. And I think also in a personal statement, it's this in my opinion better to focus on kind of certain things and really expand on those rather than just producing a list of, of oh I've done this I've done this. Like it's less of a CV and more about you discussing your experiences and showing how you're. Kind of fit for medicine but yeah i think yeah difficult at the start but gets a lot easier and then lots of drafts 
yeah, it's usually a good idea. <laughs> was this, um, so you apply, if I'm just remembering myself, you apply at the start of year 13, isn't it? So did you, yeah. was this sort of drafting process over those summer holidays before year 13 for both of you? Or? I think I started, I think I had my first draft done maybe at the end of year 12 or like in the summer. It was something like that. And it was more my college wanted it rather than me going out of my way to do it. But um, yeah, it, it was, I think I started properly drafting, redrafting um, at, in like the start of year 13. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say similar thing, like in the kind of summer term of year 12, I started making the list of things I'd put in and had a very, very rough draft by the end of year 12, just because that's when my school said they wanted mm. one, but didn't kind of properly start getting it together until like September, start of year 13. Yes, so I think we've sort of started to touch on this, but um, when you're listing all these things um, that you'd like to put in, what sort of things are you looking for? What really goes into making a medicine personal statement? I think the thing that makes it medicine as opposed to other degrees that you see like straight sciences is because medicine is such a vocational degree, you kind of need to talk about your experience with medicine. Mm. And I think especially it just from like every, like if you think about applying to universities in general, I think volunteering is the most important one because that's something which I think universities, at least from what I've kind of seen or is volunteering something, you know, everyone kind of has better access to because obviously like some people find it easy to get hospital work experience if you, you know, you know, doctors, that kind of thing. Um, so I think volunteering is the main thing you want to be putting in and just kind of showing a long-term commitment to yeah, volunteering, like in whatever form that may be. I think, yeah, just what, yeah, whatever you can get, as long as you can talk about what you've learned from it. So I think in my case, it was, um, I volunteered for about half, it was about six months at a, like a local hospice mm -hmm. um, in my area. And, but I think the more bulk of my volunteering was just working in like a charity shop for like one to two years. But I think ultimately it doesn't really matter like specifically where you got your volunteering. It's more, how you can show to them what skills you developed from that experience and how that experience has made you understand like what medicine is and why you want to do it if that kind of makes sense yeah so it's yeah for sure what you're what you've learned from something rather than specifically what it is that you were doing in the first place yeah definitely yeah there's definitely like a big pressure to talk about like work experience especially in medicine health statements but they are aware that not everyone has the same opportunities with, with that and it's definitely like quality over quantity it's how you reflect on it rather than what you've actually done so whether that's volunteering or whether you have actually managed to get into a care setting it's just kind of reflecting on the skills it's brought you and why that has like made you see that medicine is what you want to do rather than kind of just talking about the ins and outs of any work experience or anything especially given that right now with corona it's probably a lot harder to get work experience mm. so they're going to be very aware that a lot of people won't have yes, the opportunity to do yeah. that yes um so with i think something we've touched on is that it doesn't specifically have to be medicine related either um particularly with with work experience even i know that some people have um done work experience in not not like a strictly like in a hospital um might be just related to health or not even specifically um just so it, it shows you sort of a variety of things people can do to talk about the skills that they've learned and what you can show rather than what you can tell um yeah, anything definitely. yeah, yeah uh, i mean um the biggest thing i talked about in my personal statement was volunteering with like a charity that's um it, they give like sheltered accommodation to people with multiple disabilities so obviously it, it, there is kind of a care aspect there but a lot of what I was talking about wasn't kind of specifically medicine related mm. but kind of just showing how it made me kind of reflect on um, like care settings but also just the skills that volunteering brought me rather than medicine specifically. Mm. And I think ultimately because medicine isn't just kind of doing medicine if that makes sense it isn't just like diagnosing things prescribing drugs like understanding science it is like ultimately an interpersonal kind of job I don't know it's 
it's so it's less oh i've been in a hospital and spoke to people and it's more i've developed like proper interpersonal skills communication empathy all the kind of buzzwords that people use that's ultimately what's more important because you can you can like you can always learn you can learn the science you're going to learn the science in med school but you need experiences to kind of shape you as a person if that makes any sense yeah yes. and with those buzzwords in particular for oxford they have like on their website they literally tell you the selection criteria so there's like the personal characteristics like communication empathy ability to work with others and then there's also stuff about your academic potential so stuff like intellectual curiosity i think and problem solving so it's really when you're talking about things your personal statement it's kind of showing how you have those skills through what you've done rather than specifically just i've done this which is related to medicine it's more like this helped me develop my communication skills and this shows i can work with others for example yeah, yeah because like the the oxford that like you say the criteria they used it, none of the criteria is must have worked two weeks at a gp mm-hmm. yeah it's, yeah they, they never specify what you have to do and i think in the admissions things i've read from oxford oxford always seemed more understanding of you not being able to sit so if you're not able to get like say primary care experience so with like gps and that kind of thing they, they seem a lot more like understanding of that and they're they're more about what you learn from whatever opportunities you could get so yeah yeah i think another um thing that comes up often when people um ask questions about how to write personal statement talking about all the sorts of um volunteering things and um work experiences and and other things even like in epq or dv all those sorts of stuff uh, to show your interpersonal skills a lot of people are worried about how to come across as a unique candidate um i was just wondering generally what your thoughts are on that hmm. yeah i mean it's tricky because a lot of the time you're going to have done things that a lot of people have done because that's just the nature of it but it's very much just on how you reflect on it and if you kind of sit down and think okay really what did i learn from this I think how you talk about something can make your personal statement a lot more unique than specific things you've done necessarily. Yeah. Um, I mean, I suppose equally though, if you have got like an experience that is a bit more like rogue or niche, <laughs> you might like that, that, that might catch their attention a little bit. Obviously mm-hmm. that's not really what they're looking for, but I think, yeah, I agree with Claire that if you've got something that you think is, develop something really well and you can talk about it in a really nice way um or whether it's just like a, it's maybe a smaller aspect of interpersonal things that you think other people might not have mentioned you could try and talk about that but i think ultimately is you shouldn't really be writing the personal statement to like to stand out if that makes sense like you don't want to put in like flair for the sake of flair yeah, yeah you want it you want it to be like you on a paper on the pa- on the paper essentially mm-hmm. you don't want to be filling it with oh i did this cool thing pick me it's even if i have done things that other people have done i'm like i'm going to show you how i've reflected on this and how this has made me develop and that's what you're going to remember about me rather than oh that's the person that did a really cool bit of work experience yeah mm-hmm. Something that both of you actually touched on is um, having an understanding of what medicine is. Um, and would you say that that's like in, in addition to, um, you know, about wanting to study medical sciences and being good at, you know, biology and understanding that sort of side. But um, did you did you both or do you think it would be useful to sort of sit down and try and read into what the healthcare system is like, what medicine is like first and have an understanding for medicine as a career rather than just a degree? before you start writing a personal statement or what are your thoughts? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I remember um, going online, I think on the NHS website, you can uh, like, there's a bit where you can see what a typical day is like for a junior doctor mm. or an anaesthetist or all the different things. I remember like looking through them and even, I mean, I think we're going to talk about reading later, but reading books um, by doctors that kind of explain what being a doctor is actually like mm. on a, Day, like just day to day um to kind of know what you're getting yourself in for and um just re- like to help you remember that it's not just about sitting down and learning things be able to regurgitate them it yeah. is as dan said very like very much a social um job mm-hmm. i think oh what's gone out my head <laughs> what is i saying yeah yeah um i think if you kind of understand 
medicine as a career and the whole kind of NHS system, I think it helps with your reflection of things because then you're not comparing your experiences to, well, I'm reading a textbook. You're comparing yeah. it to like, this is what people have to do. This is how the system works. How would I fit into that system? Mm. Is that, I think, yeah. So that, yeah, definitely read it. Yeah. And I think also it help, it really helps with interviews as well because there's always a question about like the current state of healthcare. So yes, <laughs> just helpful throughout really. Yeah, I, I think that's a really key point that um, medicine, um, I, I guess one of the other points that makes it different to biomedical sciences is that when you write a personal statement for medicine, you're also writing a personal statement for a career, for a job. You're, you're saying it's a vocational degree, right? So you're saying like, yes, I want to study medicine, but this is actually why I would be a good doctor as well. Um, obviously, you have six years after that to decide, you know, whether you want to do that straight away or, you know, there's plenty of time for that sort of discussion. But at this stage, yeah, you've, like both of you are saying, you have to have an understanding for the career that you are essentially saying you want to you want to spend your life doing, potentially. So, yeah, that's that's really important as well. Um, anything else either of you wanted to add on that generally? Okay, so I think we've started to talk about it a little bit, but um, in terms of, so that's, we've, we've covered the sort of medicine <laughs> side in terms of interpersonal stuff, like as a career, but in terms of um, the academic side, do you have, either, do either of you have any recommendations for ways that prospective students can widen their horizons in terms of medical sciences beyond the A-level spec to try and show their, show their interest and put that into the personal statement? Um, I mean, one thing I did is just kind of if there was one bit of the A-level biology course, for example, that interested me, just go like look, find articles about it. And I mm. often asked my biology teacher for help with that, to kind of try and find things that weren't too scientific. So I wouldn't um, like struggle to understand them, but things that were just genuinely interesting um, and especially like kind of things that were happening right now. Like I remember my biology teacher used to save me like um kind of more recent articles there was one like on the first three parent baby for example which was just really mm. interesting so kind of keeping up to date with just the general news of what's going on in the world of medicine um but also one thing that i did was because i didn't um lots of my friends did epqs and i didn't but i, I slightly regressed it because I, like, I would have liked the opportunity to kind of delve deeper into something specific so I entered an essay competition I think it was a Cambridge one actually the Newnham essay cool, competition which cool. is controversial girls only. Um, <laughs> yeah. exposed we heard yeah, it here first you. from the inside <laughs> but yeah they um they have like a biological sciences one where you can yeah. pick from three titles right about it. so I wrote one on prion diseases or prion diseases I don't have to mm. pronounce it um but that was really interesting and it gave me a lot to talk about in my personal statement and kind of make it obvious that I had that intellectual curiosity buzzword um, that I kind of went out of my way to read up on this, write a whole essay about it. Yeah. So I think that like there's lots of essay competitions out there. You just need to have a Google um, and just find a title that you like if that's something that you'd be interested in. Yeah, I think I agree with Claire. I think especially if we're talking about this from like an Oxford perspective where they kind of value the whole academic side of the personal statement. I think finding a topic you're interested in and kind of like maybe like I don't know, a recent development in something and kind of delving further into it and I know your opinions on like whether you think it's feasible maybe looking into the science behind it and just talking about your kind of interest in that I think it's helpful just in preparation for medicine because you're going to be doing a lot of that in the degree but also yes. it shows <laughs> the universities that like I, I found this thing I'm interested in. This is why it was interesting, or maybe it like challenged my beliefs about certain things because that will happen repeatedly as you go through medicine when you think you know something but you actually don't. Um, a lot of things like that. Um, so yeah, essay competitions is a good one that Claire said. Um, I remember finding a. It was that it was a Cambridge thing actually. Oof. Um, <laughs> it was the. <laughs> I think it was. What was it? I think it was the Trinity College like medical sciences residential thing or something. Mm. It was like a two, three day um, like program to do with medicine. It was completely free, by the way. It was kind of, I think it was for like state school students just kind of go experience a bit of like Oxbridge life, but also, you know, get lectured on some really cool bits of medicine. And in part of it, um, I did a project 
it was it was kind of like an essay, but more of a like presentation idea, um, just on like bits about heart development and like future like like look like congenital heart defect, you know, like managing it, therapeutics, all that, which was just like a nice, interesting way to get me involved in like a specific bit of medicine. And it's something you can just like talk about quite a lot, what you learned, why you find it interesting. So, yeah. yeah, I think, again, it's about, I mean, obviously you want to talk about, you know, what you're interested in and those sort of specifics, but also including why you were interested by it. I think, Dan, Daniel, you mentioned like whether it challenged your beliefs or made you think differently about something. I think that's, I agree. I think that's a really valuable thing to show, particularly in, in academics. Um, yeah, in terms of like in terms of showing your ability to think critically about stuff in the future. Mm. Yeah. I think um, also with regards to the whole academic side of the personal statement, obviously Oxford kind of, Oxford value it, and people like I think just when you apply, people always say you know make some of it academic just to appeal to Oxford. But I think at the end of the day, you are applying to for universities, mm. so it's making sure you find the right balance between. Like all the work experience, volunteering, what you, other like skills you've developed, and also like a little bit of the academic side of it. But I think most importantly, it's this. It's I think especially this bit isn't. It's not something you need to really, really stress about. Like so, if you don't have a big paragraph explaining why you love, I don't know, heart development because I did it. Um, if you don't have a big paragraph explaining why you love it and what you learned, that will not like take you off Oxford's, mm. you know, what, yeah. what would you call it, like interview list or something. It's like, I think it was Oxford, they, they don't even use your personal statement to assign yeah. interviews. And also different universities and like different colleges within Oxford will utilize the personal statement to different amounts. It's more of just part of the whole application process. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's a key, a key thing, like the, main way that personal statements are used when you're playing Oxford is um, just kind of for your tutors to be able to read over and get to know you before interview and for them maybe to use as like a kind of starting off point for questions and interviews. Yes, yeah. So it's much better that you're writing about things that you genuinely find interesting in your personal statement and that you'll be able to talk about than just writing about something really academic for the sake yeah. of it to put definitely. in there. Like it's definitely just write about what you want to write about rather than what you think a tutor is going to want to hear because they mm. want to see like what you are about and they want to see what you're passionate about and what you can talk about in an interview. And I think um, like, even more so with Oxford, where the people that are interviewing you, interviewing you will be your tutors. Like yeah. it's even more so like you need to show them yourself because mm. these are the people that are, going, that are going to be teaching you. This isn't like the administration people in the medical school. This is, these are the people that will be teaching you for six years. So it's even more important to be like genuine in it and don't try to check boxes you think are there hmm. because half the time the tutors probably won't have like things that they require. It's more yeah, yeah. just you as a person. That's Getting a sense for it. who you are as a student and what you're interested in. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And especially since you are applying to different unis, which will all have their own kind of criteria. You don't want to block out all the other unis by just pandering yeah. to Oxford or to Edinburgh or to wherever you're applying you just mm. you want to make sure it's just a personal statement that represents you um and is truthful and you're not yeah overly overly pandering to anyone yeah. so have either of you got any recommendations uh, specifically or non-specifically for wider reading I think I think Claire has um, a I think Claire yeah I think <laughs> I, I asked that question because in our call prior to this Claire did reveal she has a list so <laughs> <laughs> well, I just have, I have a little list of things I read that I thought were helpful. Like, because one thing that really shocked me was I didn't think, because everyone knows Oxford is kind of very academic. So when I came to interview, I kind of expected it to be like fully academic based, but I did get asked like ethical questions and stuff as well. So definitely reading something like a very short introduction to medical, medical ethics by Tony Hope is a really good idea. So you kind of have a grounding of like the four pillars and consent and all. Um, the general kind of basic medical ethics um, so you can answer any of those sorts of questions that come your way but yeah that's just a good book to kind of give you an overview without like bogging you down in unnecessary detail because otherwise mm -hmm. it can get quite confusing and um, what I was saying before I found that reading books by kind of current or um, past doctors um, to kind of just get an idea of what day-to-day -day life is like um, is a good thing as well so 
to kind of get an insight stuff like trust me i'm a junior doctor by max pemberton or like the classic this is gonna hurt by adam k it's yeah. quite funny easy to read but actually give you an insight on what day-to-day -day life would be like um what was the other one? oh also i i really liked reading the man who mistook his wife for a hat by oliver sacks that yes. was a really interesting one just like mm. a collection of case studies basically of people with like really bizarre neurological disorders mm. Do you think it's do you think it's necessary to name books that you've read specifically in the personal statement, or um, or or is it better to maybe not do that and just rather talk about what you've learned generally? I personally didn't name any books. I don't think mm. in my personal statement. I think I did. I did talk about some of them in interview, but actually not my Oxford interviews. I don't think. I think it was a different interview that I ended up talking about some yeah. books I'd read. But I don't think unless you specifically have found a book that really interests you and like has inspired you in some way or you really want to talk about it then I don't think it's necessarily needed but it is definitely something you can use if you're trying to pad your personal statement out or if you've just found one book that you really want to talk about yeah yeah I think I'm the same I read like some books like only like two or three not like nothing really major or anything and um, but I didn't end up including any of them in my personal statement. Mm. I think they were there in some of my earlier drafts, but I kind of realized that the points I, that I was making with the books weren't as strong as say other things I wanted to include. Yeah. And it's kind of just a testament to no one's looking to make sure you've read these books. Mm. It, ultimately it's, if, if it like, like Claire said, if it resonated with you and you got a lot from it, then like definitely talk about it, but don't feel like you have to put these into like tick some boxes and equally don't feel like you even have to read the books to tick something like so obviously reading around the um like the subject of medicine is a great idea but i can i mean more if you so sorry that's my dog barking if you can that's hear right. it um, <laughs> if you hear when medical students are applying you kind of hear the same set of books quite frequently mm -hmm. so like don't but don't think like these are the ones I have to read and it's a mm. checklist and I have to read like all 10 and I need to try and talk about all 10 or get it in some way. Like you read whatever it interests you is what I think is the most important. Whether that's reading some scientific articles about a topic you're really interested in, building on your EPQ if you did one, I think that's ultimately what's more important. Yeah. Um, in terms of actual books, um, the ones Claire mentioned about kind of doctors, case studies and things, they're really good. I enjoyed one called Fragile Lives, which is a heart surgeon's kind of set of experiences. Common theme with my application here, the heart. Um, I think I read this, I really apologize for my dog. <laughs> um, one book I read after I applied, which I wish I would have read before because it was really interesting, is The Epigenetics Revolution. Yes, I was just gonna talk about that actually, yeah. Yeah, it's just a really, really good book and it's so interesting. And I think it challenges a lot of the ideas you're kind of taught up to A-level biology because obviously you've not got time to cover everything, but it just gives you a very new way of thinking about things. Yes. And it's just a very interesting book. Yeah. I also really enjoyed a book called How We Die by, mm -hmm. I can't his name, it's like Sherwin Newland or something like that. Um, it sounds quite um, morbid, but it's, yeah. it, it just talks about different conditions, both from a kind of scientific side of what's actually going wrong and like you know maybe how it's treated but also as different case studies to give you an idea of how these conditions will like actually affect people yeah which is obviously a really important part of medicine as well yes i was just gonna mention um and also just to sort of show the variety um because i think both of you said you hadn't specifically named any books i i did i named the epigenetic revolution specifically um yeah, but like, you know, that sort of shows you like there's no sort of formula to what you have to do or, or not do. Um, I particularly liked it for the reasons Daniel just said about it sort of changing, challenging beliefs and things. Um, so I found it interesting in that way. But yeah, there's no there's no specific answer, I think. But like both of you have said, just explore what you're interested in and just you know, have fun reading about it and being interested in, and then showing that genuine curiosity. Um, I will also mention uh, in terms of ethics, I found useful yeah uh, what's it called a radio show uh, if you have access to bbc iplayer inside the ethics committee um is really good it's on radio 4 they um show you like the literally the insides of of what the 
ethics committee will discuss over particularly challenging ethics cases, uh, which is really cool generally, even if you're not specifically thinking about medicine, it's just really interesting to listen to. So yes, I, that's my, that's my personal recommendation. Um, yeah, so moving on to, uh, I think our final question, generally speaking, uh, what is your sort of to round this all up? What is your top advice for anyone starting to write a medicine personal statement? Hmm. I mean, I oh. guess you've said quite a lot, but just to emphasize the like, don't try and overly tailor it to one university you're applying to. Like at the end of the day, like yes, um, like Oxford is a really nice you can study at, but at the same time you've got to think you've got three other place you're applying to or maybe you're not even applying to Oxford wherever you're applying to um wherever you end up you'll be studying medicine and you're going to end up at the same place at the end of the day and you've got to you can't just place all your eggs in one basket you've got to think okay well if I don't end up getting to my top choice what am I going to do I need to make sure that my personal statement is a genuine reflection of me and my interest mm. in medicine and that it's going to be something that any university can look at and be like yes okay this is someone who is a genuinely good medicine candidate um but in terms of kind of oxford specifically i'd say yeah don't overly stress about personal statement because it's not even used to like decide who gets the interview stage so do take bmat seriously or if you're not applying to BMAT, you need to take UCAT. I think it's now called, we did UKCAT, yeah. but it's currently now UCAT. Um, like do prepare for that because, and then just apply based on your strengths. So like look at it, like you can just Google um, the kind of different ways that all the different universities use like point systems or whatever to decide who gets interviewed. So some weight personal statements a lot more than UCAT, some weight UCAT or BMAT more, whatever, and just apply to what you think your personal strengths are. Like don't focus too much on one place, is what I'd say. Yeah, I, I agree with everything Claire said there. I think also just kind of rehashing what I've already said is kind of keeping it you. Yeah. Like don't 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 write it with a certain list of like things in mind. Obviously the there are certain things that are, include work experience, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. But I mean don't don't try and I think it is like pandering. Yeah, don't try and think, oh, this is what I think this university wants from me. So this is what I'm going to include. Yeah. Or, oh, I want to try and make myself stand out. So I'm going to... So, so yeah, don't lose yourself to, by, in trying to make you stand out. Because at the end of the day, you will stand out based on your own merits yeah. and what you've done and your reflection. Yeah. Um, and speaking of reflection, I think that is probably the most important part of the personal statement yeah it's it's not a list of your qualifications it's kind of a discussion about your experiences and most importantly what you got from them um yeah so yeah i think that is very valuable advice um from both of you and yeah i think that pretty much uh is our time thank you very much dan and claire for um being on the show and for giving us all this valuable advice i'm sure that it will be super helpful um for any prospective students watching or listening uh, and do let us know dm us on instagram or comment on youtube or <laughs> or however um yeah we'd love to know um i personally think it was super productive discussion i remember being very um i mean not scared but it was a daunting task writing a personal statement so um hopefully these top tips and inside info will will help anyone who's listening uh and thank you for listening and thank you to our followers for following us and engaging with us. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe on our YouTube channel and follow us at Oxford from the Inside on Instagram. And also check, up our, check out our Facebook page for um, regular updates on our content. Uh, that has been Oxford from the Inside, episode 11, I believe it is. I have been Janaid, your host. Uh, thank you once again to Daniel and Claire for being on the show. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>